late in the afternoon and for others it might be just the midday so anyways i hope you enjoy a coffee uh, or the tea as part of this uh, coffee lecture. So uh, my name is Paloma Marina Raita and I work um, at ORCID as engagement manager for uh, Global Consortium. The Austrian Consortium is one of the consortia I work uh, with and here you have also my contact details um, if you need anything from me either via email or a social uh, network. And uh, today we're covering integrating ORCID in repositories and grid systems. So let me first of all begin with a uh, overview of what I'm planning to, to talk today. Um, and of course, you can use the Q&A section during the uh, whole presentation and also at the end, the way you prefer. So first of all, um, we're going to provide a brief overview of ORCID, then in general, some ideas about integrating with ORCID, and we will then uh, be a bit more precise with integrating with ORCID in repositories and then in CRIS systems. And for each uh, of those cases, I'm going to provide some uh, examples as well of institutions that have already done it. And we will have, I hope, plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So I assume that most of you are familiar with ORCID, but uh, and apologies if I'm repeating information that you already know, but uh, for those of you who aren't that uh, familiar with ORCID, uh, ORCID is an independent, not uh, for profit organization, which is open to participation by all, uh, both uh, researchers and also organizations. And the registry was launched in 2012, so uh, 12 years ago. And currently, we work uh, only sustained by the fees of our member organizations. Everything that we do is guided by our values and funding principles. And ORCID is also community governed uh, by a board of directors that are elected and representative of our uh, membership and community. This year, we have a strong presence from Ukraine, uh, also South Africa and uh, Latin America. Colombia and Chile joining our board. So we are very happy about that as well. Again, you probably are familiar with ORCID's uh, mission, but the main idea is to enable transparent and trustworthy connections between researchers and their contributions, affiliations, and other activities by providing a unique persisting identifier for individuals. That's the ORCID ID. And individuals can use the ORCID ID um, as they engage in research, scholarship, and innovation activities. Remember that the ORCID ID is only for uh, researchers, so institutions can't have an ORCID ID, but institutions can use the API integrating with ORCID, as I'm going to discuss in a couple of slides. ORCID in general lines provides three main services, the ORCID ID, as mentioned, the unique persistent identifier for researchers, then the ORCID record or uh, ORCID profile, if you prefer. That is the page where we have the information about the researcher connected to that ORCID ID. And this includes employment, education, funding, peer review, research outputs, and other metadata. So don't understand, please, the ORCID record as only a list of publications. It is uh, more than that. And then we have the APIs, as well as the services that support all our communities of practice to enable interoperability between the ORCID record and the system of a member organization. And here is where um, we are discussing the integration part. Currently, the adoption is uh, worldwide. So we have users in almost every single country on the planet. And currently we have uh, more than 8 million active records, which means act, uh, IDs that have been used in the past year. And also uh, member organizations in 70, uh, sorry, uh, 57 countries, including 27 national consortia and a regional consortium in Latin America. And in total, we have more than 5,000 systems that are integrated correctly 
using the member API. Researchers are always in the center of what ORCID does, uh, which basically means that researchers are going to always share their ID in a secure way so that then the different institutional systems or publisher systems, profiles or funder systems can connect and via or using other persistent identifiers for uh, institutions, for um, outputs, for funding, the information is going to be connected. And this is where the magic happens and when things go automatically after those uh, permissions and securely sharing of the ID. A very common question as well is that, okay, researchers are in the center and um, everything is researcher controlled, but what happens with data quality if we uh, rely only on researchers? So we basically aim to balance these two things and we've established a list of different uh, controls and ways to basically achieve these. On the one hand, uh, researchers control their own record and they, they set their um, visibility settings and priorities and, and, and all preferences. And organizations, after researchers' authentication, can only update the information that was added by that organization. They can't modify information added by others. And when it comes to data quality, apart from a list of terms to prevent misrepresentation and procedures in order to avoid or even delete uh, false data and spam, then we also need to consider data quality as uh, something that accumulates over time. So the more data is added to the ORCID registry in a trustworthy manner or a validated manner, the, the better the quality of that data is going to be. So whenever you are adding data to the uh, ORCID registry, please add it in the quality that you would like that data to be read or a flow back into your system. So now let's go actually to the topic of this coffee lecture, which is integrating with ORCID. As mentioned, integrations are key to deriving value from ORCID, but let's clarify a bit what an integration is and what we're talking about when we refer to integrations. So an integration is a way to connect the ORCID registry with an institutional system using the ORCID API. When I mention uh, institutional system, I'm also referring to publishing system, funder system, profiling, etc. Um, an integration requires always the user's authentication, and it can be done uh, also with the public API um, when it comes to authentication and when it comes to true read data. And if the organization is using the member API, then it is also possible to enable data synchronization with ORCID, which means basically that the organization can add data to the ORCID registry and also read data from the ORCID uh, registry. And it is very important to remember that an integration is not looking up data in the ORCID registry, and it is not uh, adding ORCID IDs manually or adding uh, information from a bulk file. Integrations require always the authentication of the user. Because the authentication part is central in a user control uh, process. So when, whenever we have established authentication between two systems, then what is going to happen is that users log into the ORCID account to ensure basically that that application connects to the correct ORCID ID. This is why we also refer to authentication as securely sh sharing your ID, because here you are going to connect the researcher correctly with the corresponding ORCID ID. Then we will have information about who is asking for um, that authentication process. Here, I've used the example of an Austrian institution, 
um, that connects uh, ORCID in their uh, CRIS system. And then we have some uh, information about which permissions are given or asked. So researcher, so the researcher knows at in every single moment what type of information is asked or is going to be modified, collected, etc. Here, for example, we have an integration that is asking to add or update research activities. Uh, that can be works, affiliations, peer review, etc. Also, non-sensitive personal information such as country or or keywords or other identifiers of that uh, researcher. The uh, integration is also asking uh, trust to read trust data and also to get the ORCID ID. So when we are um, thinking of integrating with ORCID, we have basically three ways of doing it. The first way is using one of the existing certified service providers. We are working with several uh, providers in order to guarantee that they have a, in, an integration with ORCID that fulfills ORCID's uh, best practices. Some examples here might be DSpace Chris or Symplectic Elements or uh, Open Journal Systems. Then uh, institutions have also the possibility to develop a custom integration, particularly if the system that they have internally at the institution is self-developed and is not based on a, uh, an existing service provider. And then the third option, which is available for consortium members, is adopting the affiliation manager, which is a tool that um, allows a consortium members to, using a CSV file, update affiliation, education, and professional activities data for uh, researchers. I'm covering now uh, the very first option, which is use a certified uh, service provider. This past year, 2023, uh, sorry for the uh, lapses, uh, we basically relaunched the uh, certification program containing um, best practices. And, uh, and for that, we focus on four potential workflows that normally our organizations use. Those are the manuscript submission systems or journal systems, research information systems like crisis, um, uh, repository systems, and also grant facility and application management system. Currently, this is the list of our certified service providers and we are working on certifying many more as well. If you um, if you own or uh, would like to have another certified system or you want to learn more about this, please um, reach out to us because we are more than happy to, uh, to cover those certifications. And the uh, second option is, as mentioned, developing an integration that is customized. This can take a bit more time and effort, but uh, we are here uh, to help with the process. And the main difference between a custom integration and a service provider is that point one till four, we do this directly with the service provider instead of the institution. And then an institution using a service provider can jump directly to the integration with member API credentials, while a custom integration, we go with the institution through the different steps of talking about integration plans, testing in the sandbox server, um, uh, inform about integration best practices and minimum requirements, and then also demo the integration. In general lines, when we've been talking to uh, member organizations that have developed a custom integration, they refer to 45 to 60 hours of technical work, including testing from the time they begin um, preparing the integration until they launch it. And finally, the affiliation manager, which as mentioned is a tool that uh, doesn't require any previous IT knowledge or any programming um, skills because you're going to work with a, with a CSV file and then 
a tool that is hosted by Wicked in the system. After uploading the CSV file, then you have the possibility to send emails asking for permissions directly from the system. Researchers will need to grant those permissions the same way we've seen with the authentication phase, and then the corresponding affiliation, education, or professional activity entry will uh, flow to the ORCID records. And the institution will have the uh, authenticated ID also for, for that. So now let's uh, focus a bit more on uh, the part about integrating ORCID in repositories, particularly referring to um, those best practices that I was talking uh, about earlier, which were developed in the context of service providers, but actually are uh, applicable for repositories in general. So of course we work with these best practices when we talk to service providers uh, for uh, repositories, let's say this space, uh, ePrints, et cetera. Um, but also if you are developing an integration in your own repository, those are um, guidelines to bear in mind as well. Basically, it is a must that there is a workflow um, authenticating the authors and contributors uh, or kid IDs. So the researcher that is going to interact in the repository, then um, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, very important to collect those uh, permissions, as mentioned. Um, ideally, the system will collect also authenticated IDs for contributors, not only for, uh, for the main author or the first author, and um, then the ORCID ID should be displayed in the hosted research output, uh, regardless whether that's a publication or a data set, software entry, etc. And whenever the metadata is sent from the repository to another platform, uh, for example, from the institutional repository to uh, OpenAir, it is important that the metadata, uh, that the authenticated information is passed together uh, with the metadata. And then, of course, write information to the ORCID um, record whenever possible. Um, ideally, also, best practices for repositories are uh, that uh, data from ORCID is used to populate the, the repository, if that's applicable, and also uh, that um, admins can uh, associate ORCID IDs with authors and contributors after the authentication process. One example at a uni uh, an institutional level is um, the DSpace integration that the Federal University of Irlandia in Brazil has. Uh, in this case, um, as you can see here, uh, a researcher can connect their uh, ORCID ID in the uh, login options. So it's uh, the fourth option there. And then they are allowed to send uh, permissions to the repository and the repository will write data to the corresponding ORCID ID. In the particular case of the Federal University of Irlandia, this data writing is used in order to uh, work with theses and dissertations mainly, also other type of outputs, but um, this is one specific case. And as you can see uh, in the image down below, the source, is the Federal University of Irlandia, in particular, the institutional repository. This adds uh, what we call a trust marker, and it is part of the uh, trust built over time that I was referring at the beginning, basically because whenever we are reading this information, we are going to see that it is the, univer the Federal University of Irlandia adding that information. Therefore, we can guarantee that the person actually wrote that thesis in that institution, and it is not information that is completely vague or even fake. Let's move now to the situation with CRIS systems. Following the same pattern, we've developed focusing on service providers, a set of best practices to integrate ORCID in a, um, inform a research information system, but 
if you have your own research information system that is completely self-developed, you can also use these uh, as, as, as a guideline for best practices. Again, here we need to have a, a process to authenticate uh, researchers and collect authenticated ORCID IDs and the corresponding permissions. The permissions are, uh, they are super important because they are going to help and they are going basically to determine whether we are able as an organization to interact with that ORCID um, record or not. Then uh, the IDs should be displayed. Ideally, data from ORCID is going to be used to populate the researcher profiles and discover new uh, researcher activities. So reading uh, data from funding entries or from works so that you have all that information in the corresponding research information system. And then add employment or education information to the researchers uh, or kit records and if applicable works and funding awards as well. Um, and then ideally here in the uh, in increased systems or research information systems, there should be um, a link to the researcher profile in the research information system to connect to the ORCID record. And um, then if possible, and if there is this connection uh, internally, if you have a visiting researcher that they are allowed to cover this um, workflow as well. And as in the case of repositories, administrators after authentication they can also associate IDs with other uh, authors and, and contributors. Here, um, to pick an example of the institutional level, I'm going to use uh, this space, Chris, um, of, uh, in this case, the, uh, at the University of Bamberg in Germany. So you see uh, the uh, this space, Chris interface on the left part and the ORCID ID correctly linked and displayed there after the authentication of the author. And on the right part, you see the uh, entries added. First of all, an employment with the source, uh, University of Bamberg, and then also a conference paper. So a piece of uh, work or an output added to the uh, system. Also the source here, is at the university. So the data that is asserted, is employment, education, and um, items in the works uh, sections. And in both cases, this trust marker is added. A similar process happened, for example, with the uh, CRIS system uh, PURE. If you're using PURE from Elsevier, you will also have the, uh, the connection between Scopus ID, if that's available, in the in the pure instance added to the ORCID record. CRIS systems are not exclusively uh, a, at an institutional level. We can also have them at a national level. And here I'm uh, showing the example of the Finnish national uh, CRIS uh, research fee, uh, research dot fee or FI. Um, and uh, basically, they also use ORCID to facilitate metadata reusability. So as part of the researcher's profile tool, the researcher is able to connect securely with authentication, the ORCID ID, and then uh, the data flow um, that, uh, that way as well. And they are currently working in order to export data from the research fee uh, to uh, the ORCID record as well. And our work related to repositories and CRIS system doesn't stop here. Um, and that's the good part. So we keep working to support trustworthy connections between ORCID um, and then institutional and national CRIS systems and repositories. So we basically have a continuous work with CRIS and repository uh, service providers. Uh, regardless whether the repository is more like a publication repository or it's a data repository, we keep working in that direction. If uh, we we if we talk to open source providers that have global coverage, 
And then we also promote the Global Participation Fund. Um, so I also welcome you to check the Global Participation Fund because uh, we have funds for, uh, for community building, but also for technical development focused on open source um, solutions and tools. So this can be of interest for many of you. Then we also have worked with uh, national CRIS instances uh, worldwide, for example, the Peruvian CRIS or the Ukrainian CRIS uh, URIS or the uh, Norwegian CRIS GVA. Uh, and uh, also, if you don't use an existing provider uh, like DSpace, DSpace CRIS, OGS, eGreens, etc., um, but you're developing your own uh, solution or you are integrating Wicked in your own solution, we also keep supporting organizations in that process. And with that, I would like to thank you all very much. I've seen uh, several questions in the Q&A and chat. So we have, as uh, promised, several uh, minutes to, to cover those, actually half an hour, which is uh, great. Uh, so thank you very much for the interest. Thank you so much, Paloma. That was excellent. Um, let's maybe start with Q&A, then uh, we'll address a question uh, in a chat. Um, so the first one is from Sergio. The affiliation certifying option for affiliated institutions can relate with ROAR. Is there a ROAR integration? Um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Sergio, for, uh, for the question. Actually, ROAR, uh, research organization registry for those of you that are uh, that aren't familiar with ROAR is the identifier that we use in order to assert affiliations. So if an organization has an integration with ORCID and they would like to write affiliation data, regardless if they are using the affiliation manager or if they are using their own integration, then uh, the identifier to use is ROAR. Um, also, if you don't have a ROAR ID for your organization, you can register it is completely uh, free of charge. And um, if a researcher goes uh, to the ORCID record and wants to add their own uh, affiliation manually, also the, um, the uh, information data is based on ROAR. So um, what we do at the moment is every three weeks, we read the data from ROAR. So if a new ROAR ID is created, we include that into the data that we display. Same with updates in ROAR. Uh, imagine that we have an, an institution and, and the name is in Spanish, but in ROAR is in English. So it's this plain, let's say, instead of uh, Universidad de Buenos Aires, uh, uh, Buenos Aires University, then researchers aren't able to find that correctly, then it is updated in ROAR, and then we update that in our system as well. Thanks a lot. And uh, Iran Su is asking, uh, is DSpace 7 going to be one of your service providers for the member API? If yes, when would it be working? Um... Um, DSpace 7, uh, in the version 7.3 and, and onwards is already, uh, or better say, it was certified in the previous version of the, of the certification. So currently the same workflow as I was describing applies. There are some details to be improved. And if I'm not mistaken, they are going to be improved during this year so that this page seven works completely under um, the new certification program. Uh, but yes, so if the institution is using this page seven, they can completely move forward. And there are uh, there is plenty of, doc of documentation about uh, this page seven, so the integration with uh, ORCID and this page seven. Thanks a lot. Then Maureen is asking, do you have specific certification providers? We applied for certification to their CTS. So if we are interested in the integration of ORCID ID, is the CTS certification okay? Maureen, I'm not sure uh, about this uh, CTS uh, certification. 
Uh, so if you can write in, write me an email uh, about the case specifically, the my email address is uh, the core trust seal. Um, okay, sorry. So uh, the core trust seal is uh, separated from the ORCID certification. And as part of the core trust seal, uh, there is no reference to, uh, to ORCID. The core trust seal is basically for uh, trustworthiness in repositories, in general lines, and the ORCID certification might or might not be included as part of that, um, as part of that repository. So if you want to have an integration in, uh, in ORCID and your, um, and your uh, repository, that's a separated uh, workflow. So it's not related. You can have an integration with ORCID and not being a um, core trial seal uh, certified or the other way around as well. Or you can be both. Thanks a lot. Then Isabel is asking, if we are not an ORCID member institution, could our DSpace Chris repository read information from researcher ORCID records? The answer is yes. So uh, DSpace Chris, um, as well as DSpace, works with both the uh, member API and the public API. So the only thing you will need to do is uh, generate the credentials for the public API, and then researchers are going to be able to share the ID uh, with authentication, and then you will be able to read public uh, information as well. So the answer is yes. The thing that you won't be able to do is uh, write data to the uh, ORCID records, but you will be able to read information. There is also a follow-up question from Maureen. Maybe we should address that why we oh, haven't yes, switched sure. to another topic yet. My question is, what do you consider certified repository? So, um, maybe... so here, what we are certifying is not the repository. What we are certifying is the integration. So how that uh, repository is working with ORCID and the API. So the criteria are the ones that I was mentioning. Um, so then, uh, as mentioned, the, the repository platform can be trustworthy and a certified repository platform, but might not have an ORCID integration. So uh, what we are certifying with ORCID is the, the integration. So that interaction via the API, not the repository per se. Thanks a lot. And the next question is, is it possible to make the connection between the ORCID content and the Christ persistent and uh, auto sync? The also gives one the permission and then the systems can communicate new content both ways anytime. Like it seems to be available between ORCID and data side, cross ref currently, or will it, it, will it only be one time sync between systems launched at the time of the also action? The answer here is it, uh, it depends. So this basically depends on how that connection is established. What we have seen um, with several integrations with ORCID is that either the system, the, the, the CRIS system or the repository, when there is new information, they send uh, this new information to, uh, to the ORCID record, following more or less, um, as you were mentioning in the question, the same pattern as data side or crossref when they auto update, or what we've uh, also seen is that the uh, the platform, either the CRIS system or the repository, establishes a um, period of uh, time for a batch upload. So every uh, month or every two weeks or every two months, depending on how it is configured new information is added to the ORCID registry if available. Ideally, it would be uh, on a synchronization basis. So uh, whenever the system has new information, it is added to the, to the ORCID record. But yes, so the answer is it is possible, but depends on the configuration of the platform. Thanks a lot. I see a follow-up question yes. on that question. <laughs> So mm -hmm. the, the other way around, bringing new uh, ORCID content into the CRIS, same procedure. 
So there are some uh, systems that uh, read the ORCID record with a regular um, activity, let's say every month uh, or every two weeks, they read uh, the, uh, the API just to check whether there is new information or not. And others, what they do is establish a webhook notification. So basically, whenever there is new information on the ORCID record, the system receives a notification indicating that there is new information available. And then the system sends that, uh, that call to ORCID to read that information. Thanks a lot. And the next one may be too technical for this meeting, uh, but in uh, Symplectic, ORCID carries the notes field over to the BIPTEC citation in the ORCID record. Is there any way we can alter the BIPTEC citation elements to exclude the notes, or do we just need to go through all the notes and remove any information that we don't want displayed in ORCID? I am not entirely sure about uh, the answer for this question. So uh, basically, Symplectic Elements as a service provider should offer the possibility to uh, correct the information you're sending to an ORCID record. But um, that might be something, uh, as it looks like in a specific case, uh, that might be something we need to look um, at with uh, more detail. So Mel, if you can send me an email with the with the situation, then we can explore it. Because at, right at this moment, I don't really uh, visualize exactly the, the process you're referring to. Thank you. And the next one is, we use ORCID IDs in our CRIS system and I would like to push our records to ORCID. Are there any guidelines or recommendations on which level researchers should give their consent in our system for the ORCID expert? For example, should we ask for publication type or for each entry in our system, or does ORCID recommend pushing all entries to ORCID? Let me uh, briefly share back my um, screen because um, I can answer this a bit better with um, the authentication page um, being displayed. So just a second. Okay, so when a system asks for uh, permissions, what um, researchers are going to be presented is something like this, um, as mentioned. So the permissions are asked for every research activity, as you can see here in the first line. Uh, add, update your research activities, and this includes works, all work types, all affiliations, oral funding, uh, oral uh, peer review, etc. So in the case you are mentioning, there is no specific guideline saying um, we prefer only this type of uh, work type or this type of affiliation. This is up to the institution to decide. And of course, uh, you are more than welcome to talk to us about uh, exactly your plans and what do you want uh, to do. Um, in general lines, ORCID is a platform where uh, all the metadata can be included. So we don't recommend that you only add a type of um, work or a type of affiliation. If you have information about publications, if you have information about data sets, software, uh, artistic performance, etc., everything is, is welcome. It is true that some institutions create kind of an intermediate interface for the researcher on their own to select which information they would like to add to an ORCID record. Because sometimes they might have, I don't know, maybe a conference abstract they don't want to have uh, publicly available. Um, so that's a, an option for the institution. But from our point of view, every single um, output information is more than welcome. Thanks a lot. Next one is from Isabel. Uh, is there a user group where I can ask questions about the use of public API in this space, Chris? 
Yes, um, I can. Uh, what I can do is sharing the link to our API user group, uh, or maybe Fran can add that in the chat for everyone to have it. Uh, we have a, a public uh, user group for the API. Let me, uh, it is there, it is added uh, right now in the chat and you're more than welcome to join uh, that group and of course, uh, interact with uh, the community about the integration and the use of the public API. Um, we don't support the public API directly, but uh, we use always that, that group. And then when it comes to the uh, DSpace Chris configuration per se, that should be um, the uh, Lyricis uh, community. Um, that is the host of this space who uh, works with, with that. Thanks a lot. Then Gultekin is asking, is it possible to make full testing before institutional membership, data synchronization, et cetera, with our Chris system? Yes, it is not only possible, it is even something that I strongly recommend that uh, that you test as much as you can. Um, yes, so the Sandbox uh, testing server is available for everyone, regardless if you're a member or not. Um, and uh, you only, uh, probably Fran can help me add in the link here in the chat as well. You only need to uh, request Sandbox uh, credentials and, and begin uh, testing. You don't have to be a member for that. Thanks a lot. That's excellent. Um, there is a question, is there a possibility of uploading a CV to my ORCID account for the metadata to be updated? I um, guess not. But... There is no way to update a CV, uh, but uh, what it is possible is if you have all your um, publications or outputs in a BIPTEC file, you can upload the big tech uh, file uh, on the interface directly and and then all your publications are going to be completed but uh, not a general cv mm -hmm. thank you and um there is um another question hi paloma many thanks for all the information you shared may I ask you the following in case we would like to set up a production member API to Pure, a short description of our client application is needed. The related ORCID FAQ page says, this text will be displayed on the authorization screen with question mark icon to your integration users. A short description of your integration is required. For us, it's not clear who will see the short description. The ORCID user who would like to synchronize their data or we as librarians. Let me uh, use a screen sharing again to answer uh, this question, as it is probably easier for uh, for everyone and a bit more uh, visual. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, in, and if I understood the question uh, correctly, I'm um, just sharing right now my um, screen. This is the uh, Sandbox um, API uh, credentials uh, form, but it will be the same uh, for the member. So the only thing is the Sandbox doesn't appear here. So this question, if I'm not mistaken, refers to this short description of your client application. Am I correct? Yes, so in this case, this is only a uh, description of the uh, application. In this case, a Chris system based in Pure that we use for internal purposes to understand a bit more uh, what this integration is about. But it's not related to something that is going to be used for researchers authenticating in your system or uh, for any other purpose. It is basically only to understand the type of request we are we are receiving. Thanks a lot. And we also have some um, questions in the chat. Um, when you started your presentation, you were explaining the difference between lookup and synchronization, and uh, 
Guido was asking, uh, I don't understand the difference between the lookup and synchronization. S synchronizing requires lookup. Thank you uh, for uh, for that question. So when I uh, refer to uh, an integration, it is always including this um, authentication part. And then uh, I'm referring to synchronize information for that ORCID record in particular. So you get the authentication, you get the permissions, and then you are allowed to read information from that ORCID record and also write information uh, uh, to that particular ORCID uh, record. Where, um, what, I referring to, what I'm referring to when I speak about lookup is uh, the possibility to simply search on the ORCID registry or pick the public data file and update uh, or upload in a bulk all that data to your system or enter the name of the researcher without authentication and read all that information into your system. That's, uh, that's the part about lookup that I'm referring to without the authentication process. Thanks a lot. Then Jan Eric wrote that uh, Norwegian institutions could get in touch with him uh, if um, they have questions about national integration. Um, and uh, then um, thank you for reason... correcting the name. So I, I said it wrong. I said GVA and it is NVA, the, the national Norwegian uh, Chris system. And Paul is asking for sharing a contact because um, I would like to ask for a training uh, for the consortium members. Yeah, so my email address is, uh, is there, but it is also added to the first um, slide of the presentation. So given that we are sharing the slides, you can definitely write me a message. And there is a question in the Q&A. Florian is asking, um, can integrated Chris request appearance on the search and link list in the ORCID profile uh, work section? Um, yeah. So here, um, these are uh, two, two separated things. One is the uh, is a search and link. And another thing is an institutional integration. So the search and link is not open to every... Uh, single uh, institution or every single repository integration, it is open to certain type of platforms. So for example, platforms that have a national or an international coverage, um, uh, let's say uh, at the moment, Crossref or, or Scopus or uh, the German National Library, etc. So the, the search and link wizard is not a section opened for um, every single um, Chris system. Uh, in any case, we are finishing some guidelines for um, uh, search and link wizards as well, following the pattern that I've uh, mentioned for repositories and crises. So there might be the case that the particular integration you're referring to actually qualifies for a research, uh, sorry, for a search and link wizard, um, but this is not something for every single integration with ORCID. Thanks a lot. Guido is also saying, maybe it's not the scope of the session, but in case you know how many pharma companies have ORCID integrated when dealing with external and internal scientists. And I That's don't know, maybe other question. colleagues in the room know. <laughs> I don't have all the data. I know that Open Pharma has worked um, very closely with ORCID, uh, using ORCID for, for uh, uh, researchers related to their field. But uh, there are a couple of colleagues of mine working more with the pharma industry. So I hope that we can provide more details uh, about that soon. Uh, for the time being is Open Pharma. And they have been uh, super supportive of ORCID as well. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any other questions. So if you still have questions, colleagues, you, you have maybe a couple of minutes more to add them. Let's see, yeah. Guldekin um, is asking, could you share with us what kind of benefits 
an institution, a research you may have from ORCID institutional membership, um, university management saying that ORCID membership is free for researchers. Why do we need to become a member? That's a very good question, actually. So um, it is true for researchers, the ORCID ID is for free. Uh, however, uh, if you want as an institution to interact with the ORCID record then um, and write data to the ORCID record, then an institutional membership is required. Basically, the main uh, point is to be able to add those trustworthy data to ORCID records and the validated information. With that, also the visibility of the institution is increased as the, uh, as the source of that information is going to be the institution. Then uh, we also have several types of reports for member organizations in order to be able to monitor better the information that is added to the ORCID record, the, uh, the researchers that are connected to that institution, etc. Um, so, but also if you would, um, or if you want to communicate more with your uh, member, uh, sorry, with your management at an institution, we have also um, a page specific for universities and research institutions that I'm adding here in the chat, where um, you're going to see other benefits as well, detailed and uh, and maybe this helps with conversations with your with your management thank you so much and uh, there are also many thank you messages uh, in in the chat uh, and yes uh, you will receive uh, a link to slides uh, after this session um, and thank you so much paloma it was written in the chat that you are a great speaker and indeed uh, <laughs> you can explain everything uh, very, very clear. Um, so thank you all for uh, for listening, of course. Uh, the slides are going to be shared. Um, I will share with Irina the last version and she will be able to share that together with the recording. And uh, of course, I'm available for, uh, for questions if you need them. Um, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. And thanks a lot, Christian, Martin, Fran, for helping to organize this session. It was excellent. Uh, then uh, wishing everyone a good day, evening, uh, morning, whenever you are. And um, expect an email from me with uh, a link to slides and recording in case you want to share the recording with your colleagues. Uh, Thanks again for joining and uh, spending this hour with us. It's very, very useful. Thank you so much, Paloma. Stay well, everyone. Have a very nice rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.